So um, unfortunately, I um, I didn't commit um, I didn't commit anything to the repo yet. I'll, I'll try to do that afterwards. Um, can Can you see my screen? Okay, uh, Visual yes. Studio Code. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me um let me increase the whoops sorry. I'll increase the font size a little bit so it's a little more readable. Um, yeah. So. I guess I'll, I'll I'll get started. Um, I guess this probably would have been good if if there were, these are were actually slides. But um, in, in any event, um, I you know so this this chapter um, you know, we're going through the uh, JavaScript for data science book, um, and this chapter is about objects and um, and classes, um, and I guess kind of the start of the chapter I wanted to. I guess I'll draw out a few things that the authors said at the very beginning that I thought was extremely nice way to frame um, the chapters. Just say like, as you can see on the screen, like objects in JavaScript are just key value pairs, right? There's some key and there's an associated value. And then the interesting part comes from this other observation is that a value doesn't have to be data. You know, it doesn't have to be a string or a number. It can be a function. Um, so in that way, you could have objects that contain both data and functions, or just functions, or just data, right? So they can objects can contain like any mix of these these things, which allows you then to do object-oriented programming, where objects have attributes or I forget what the JavaScript term is, attributes or properties, and then also have associated methods. So basically functions that are defined within the scope of the object itself, right? So for example, you've got, let's say, a, a, a pencil, um, and the pencil could have the attribute of, uh, you know, the color of the lead, you know, is it red, is it black, et cetera? Uh, and then it could have the method write, right? You could write with it. Um, and so, so you can have this. This you can develop this object-oriented programming approach with 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 JavaScript by by simply associating functions with with objects. Um, and the the book starts out kind of constructing constructing objects um, sort of manually um, that, that that have these attributes where that have these characteristics where they contain both. Um, you know, data and, and and a function. So I'm just grabbing the, the examples from the book um, for, for lack of time and lack of imagination. Um, but really, I just kind of wanted to talk about, I guess, the, the shape the shape of objects. Um, kind of a, well, anyway, the title will make a little bit more sense uh, uh, shortly. Um, but so here, here we've got, um, you know, from the example, we've got two, two objects that are created. Um, an object called square and an object called circle. Uh, and let's look at the object called square. So it, it has it has a few attributes. Uh, has a has a name attribute, which is square. Has a size attribute, which is size five. Um, and then uh, it also has functions associated with it, right? So it has the function area, um, and area is simply calculated as you would for calculating the square area of an area. Uh, 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 calculating the area of a square by multiplying, you know, the length of both sides um, times one another, right? Or just taking the square of, of the, the, the length of, of one of the sides. Um, and then we can also calculate the perimeter uh, of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the shape uh, of the square um, in, in this way. So here you've got attributes, here you've got functions. And the same is true for, for a circle. So we can do the same thing with a circle. Um, we'll create some object called circle. Uh, it has attribute of a name, attribute of uh, the the size, so the, the in this case the radius, um, and and then we have we have method we have functions associated with it, um, area and perimeter, just just as before. Um, so I guess I'm calling this like the shape of objects because. Um, here, here it introduces this concept within that exists in ob object-oriented programming called polymorphism. So, uh, as long as uh, 
as long as objects have have you know methods of the same name, they can be handled in the same way. So as long as they have the same shape, figuratively speaking, um, so as long as they have the same the same shape, they can be treated in, in exactly the same the same way. Um, so for example, here we could we could kind of perform some operations looping over our these two uh, these two objects, which are shapes, because both of them share the same the same methods, an area method and a perimeter method. Um, so that's exactly what they do in, in the book. So um, you know we can we can basically um, create create some some function here that's going to um, take all of, all of the the, the shapes uh, or, or well you know has a has a parameter called shapes um, that will be kind of a, a an array of things array of objects and so for each each member like each element of that shapes array uh, or that list um, uh, we're going to do a few things we're going to compute the area. Um, and then we're going to compute the, the perimeter. Um, and, and then we're going to log out the result. Um, so saying the name of the shape, the area, um, the computed area and the computed perimeter. Now, even though we're working with you know, two different shapes, working with a square and a circle, they're, they're still kind of made to be the same shape figuratively speaking, because they have the same methods. They have an area method and a perimeter method. Uh, so we can we can loop over we can loop over square and circle and then it'll log out you know what we what we might expect for for, for this. Um, so you know since each one of them has a name a name um, e each one of these things is the square and the circle object both have a name uh, property um, we can we can obtain the name property here as we're logging. And because each one of them has an area, an area method, we can compute the area and return it to, to, to A. And because each one of them has a perimeter uh, method, we can we can compute the perimeter of the of the shape and return it to P. And then log all of that that out. Uh, here I'm just showing the code, um, not the not the results, but you can kind of understand hopefully what's 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 going on here. Um, so, so that that's these are kind of some of the introductory ideas in the in the chapter where they're trying to lay down the intuition behind um, object oriented programming and and then I guess polymorphism in in particular um, as one of the kind of characteristics of of, of an object uh, oriented programming uh, system. Um, now, hey, one question. Sure. Uh, in that code, uh, could you go back to the our, yep. yes over there? Uh, in nine thirty nine and forty one, uh, is it really necessary uh, to give an uh, an argument for the area and perimeter methods? Because uh, that kind of syntax is basically what we got rid of from the example in the beginning, right? Yeah. Uh, so at least when I tried it, uh, yes, sorry. Well, no, I was going to say, like, I, I, I think we have to only because these are defined in this way that they have an argument. I, I, I imagine if they didn't have an argument, then we probably wouldn't have to write S here. I think. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that that was an example where the methods are defined with this. So you can use no, no, no argument and it works as well. But in this case, it does need. Yeah, I, I think it's the way, I don't know, I, I think it's just the way that they're they're defining the functions here. Um, yeah, they're, they're actually kind of defining it in a way where it's like, the, it's almost like an at, set up like an attribute. And then there's a, uh, um, I guess this is sort of like an anonymous function here. If I'm getting my terms right, yeah. Because la la later they, they they define functions in a in a in a in a different way, um, where where they're sort of like named named methods. I, mean, I guess these are still named in a sense, um, but then they 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 expect they ex 
I guess this part of the definition, at least as I'm understanding it, it seems like it's anonymous, I guess. And then it's, but it's also expecting a, a parameter or an argument. Um, yeah. So that's a good observation. But also maybe it'd probably be easier for the reader if, I, I don't know if they're writing it this way just to have it look like, you know, so they could make the point that every, you know, these are keys and these are values. And then it happens that these values, this value is a function. Um, but it might be nice if they were, I guess the book were consistent, I guess, in, in its approach. Um, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, but you're exactly right, Lucio. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess these are kind of like the introductory ideas that are kind of just to, to get um, introduction to give, provide an intuition about how object-oriented programming works in, in, in JavaScript. Um, and this, in this way, up uh, you know, here they're defining these, these objects. Uh, so they're, they're, they're kind of encapsulating ev all of these things. Like, so the, 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 uh, properties and then the methods as, um, you know, within, within an object, right? So this is one way of doing it. You can construct an object like this, but there's another way in which you can do it that is maybe more interesting. Um, it is is instead of creating an object, you know, like basically kind of encapsulating everything in an object as you define an object, instead to create a class and, and then to, to define the class, um, um, basically to define to define the class um, in in kind of the same in a very a very similar way, let's say, um, uh, and and so uh, the way that they do it. You know, they show in the book is that you you can define the classes as follows. So you instead of def, instead of you know assigning this to a an object, we just have a class declaration or a class definition. So we're saying this is a class named Square, and then within the curly brackets, we uh, we, we 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 basically define what the class uh, what the class contains. Um, uh, and so the first element that they show within the book uh, is that uh, a class has uh, a constructor function. So uh, basically a way in which we can we can later create an instance of uh, of, of this class. Um, doesn't have to be, I guess, with a parameter. Maybe it does actually. Uh, but anyway, you're, you're constructing, you're constructing, you're creating or kind of initializing an object of class square. Right, so this is what the constructor function does. It just constructs an object um, um, of, of of this class, and so a square is, you know, is is defined by its its size, so the length of one of its sides, um, and so the the parameter that we need to construct uh, a square is 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 size, and then um, we're we're defining we're defining the the object by uh, in this fashion. So we're referring to the object itself, you know, as it's being instantiated, we refer to it as this, so this object that's being instantiated, giving it a property name, which is always equal to square. I guess that's just, you know, definitionally what a, the name of the square is. And then, and then we're, we're also um, providing it the property size. And this property size is coming from the constructor function. So as we instantiate object um, uh, uh, like as, as we create an instance of the class square we need to pass um, the, the size so this is the first thing that the class is doing so it's it's basically constructing an object giving it some properties but we can also um, give it methods um, that are available for the object so basically we're, we're, we're recreating this this square out object but as a class rather, at least for the moment, rather than an object. Um, and so for the, uh, as, 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 early, you know, as before, we're, we'll create some methods and, you know, area method and a perimeter method, and then we define, we define what those methods um, are. Um, and so in this case, um, we'll just uh, compute the size, uh, compute the area. Um, so here we'll, we'll uh, multiply, the, the size the size of 
this object, you know, like this particular instance of the object times itself, and then return that as the area, and then we can compute the, the perimeter in similar in similar fashion. So basically here, um, unlike above, we have the name of the method, um, uh, kind of an invocation of the method. And I, I guess if, if there were if there were arguments, the arguments would be here, but here, unlike above, there are no arguments. Um, so above we had the argument it. Um, uh, here we have no arguments. And then and then this is basically the the the, the instructions on 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 how to how to how to basically um, execute the code to to implement the the area method. So this is the code that's being executed, and then then we're returning the that result um, uh, as as the result for the area method, and same for for perimeter. Uh, so we can we can define a class in this way. So have a class definition, have a constructor, then have some some methods method definitions. Um, so now we can kind of think about having, you know, like before we saw we had an object that encapsulated, you know, data and behavior. Um, here we've got a class, but the class is, is just the definition. There's nothing that exists at this point, no object that exists. We just have a class. So now we need to create an object with a class. So I'm jokingly call it a classy object. Um, so this basically we need now to create an instance of that you know, create an object that is an instance of the class that we've just defined. Um, so we would do it in this the following way. So we'd create, you know, create an object SQ, short for square, equals new. So we're going to create a new instance, uh, uh, a new instance of the class. Um, and we're going to say that it's of the class square, and we're passing to the kind of this class definition, the, the expected parameter. So this is this is size. Um, so we're going to create a new instance of a square. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a square of size three. So three, uh, length of three for for for, for it, it, it sides. Um, and then since this this class has methods that are associated with it, we can we can we can invoke those methods in a way similar to what we saw earlier. So we can kind of to see this in action, we can basically log out um, these things. So we can, you know, have the square name, square name, and then we can uh, use like string interpolation to basically put, you know, insert here um, the name that's associated with the square. So if we look up at the at the definition here um, in our constructor function, we uh, saying the name is always equal to square. So we'll have square copied here in the area is. And then we have the the object SQ, so we this instance of a, the square class, um, and then we're we're invoking the, the the area method associated with it. So we know that this instance um, this instance has length three or size three, so it'll be three times three is is nine, um, and then that'll that'll be that'll be our area. Um, so in this way, we can we can create a class, um, and then and then create individual instances of of the class and and then for those individual instances we can access their properties or implement their their methods um, against uh, you know the contents of of that particular instance of the class right um so uh, th there's one question. yeah oh sorry go ahead Lucio. Uh, when you execute this uh, javascript chunks in the well, in the book as a web page, uh, does the code work? Because oh, well, that's uh, a good were, question. Yeah, because uh, I mean, how how it was set up. Uh, like like my best guess is that it would not work because the definition for the square is in another chunk compared to the to the instance that we are creating, and for, for this book. It's like every chunk was a, a local scope. So um, I, I, I suspect that maybe when you're oh. trying to create an instance in line 74, uh, it's not getting recognized what is a, a square plus. But, a, I, but I don't know, I have to try. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good question, Lucio. Like I, I don't know how this is implemented with with our markdown, whether whether it, it it's sort of like if I could put it in these terms, like 
each chunk is its own independent session or if the two like the two chunks know anything about the results of the previous chunk yeah i i, I actually didn't i i was lazy <laughs> today and i didn't i didn't try that um i guess as i i commit this i'll i'll check and fix if if necessary that's but that's a really good question i just kind of divided it up for sort of presentation purposes i suppose um but that's a that's a really good question um and i know for for our markdown for other things although here it's using a package like i i use stata this other statistical software package um and 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 and, and indeed like things well, our markdown can run stata chunks but the chunks work in exactly the way you fear lucio so like each chunk has like no knowledge of what previous chunks have done um so yeah we'll we'll have to see we'll have to see um yeah also maybe one last comment before we go to the inheritance sure. part uh, i think it may be natural for us that we are just learning about classes uh, the wonder where are we defining the methods in a different section uh, compared to the other properties like name and size why the line in sorry why the line 62 and 63 why do they don't they go for example inside the the constructor right um at least from from the link that i have just sent uh, it serves for a, a purpose of memory efficiency so like I, I don't want to explain it it's not like i fully understand it but it's a little bit more clear in the image in the book i think it's uh, well, there is not a specific like href for the image, but it's basically that, yes, that, that one over there. So when yep. you create the instance for SQ, uh, the extra memory that is being used is for the specific properties that are defined in the constructor. But it's not like the, the methods are having to be uh, almost like redefined for this specific instance. Uh, what happens is that if we were to define such methods that is area and perimeter inside the constructors, then for the specific instance of the square class, that is the SQ uh, instance, then we would also need extra memory for those same functions, even though they are doing exactly the same. So really what, what it is changing uh, instance by instance of the same class, it's really just the, the properties that we specify in that constructor. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I'll, I'll have to have a look at the, the Stack Overflow article you you uh, you sent. Um, yeah, and and um, also I was um, and maybe maybe I guess in Slack I'll throw the a link to the. As I was re as I was re reading this chapter, it was kind of I had a lot of flashbacks to the the um, um, Hadley's uh, advanced R book. I'm not sure if you've 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 read it or read it or had a look through it, but um, it it talks about you know how a few implementations of object oriented programming in 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 R. Um, and actually, for for me, I guess in terms of background, I my sort of first serious exposure to object oriented programming was was with the advanced R book uh, rather than with other stuff I mean it like I guess I'd been casually exposed to it but not really thinking about it so I, I think there's a lot a lot here that um, that feels very similar to maybe like R6 um, and anyway um, so I guess for people who are coming to this to R you know maybe maybe it'd be worth looking at those books um but perhaps there are things about javascript that are very specific to javascript i i, I don't know i don't know enough about object oriented programming in either language to really to really say um, um yeah i guess let me now move to inheritance um so i guess you know maybe informally we can kind of define inheritance as i mean if you kind of think about it and say the physical world and biology that you know um, parents as in like biological parents 
have certain attributes about them, you know, certain, uh, 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 you know, let's say animals have, have certain attributes about them, or let's say humans, you know, hair color, weight, et cetera, uh, or height rather. Um, and, and that, you know, when, when children are born, um, they, you know, through some biological process, they, they, they inherit certain attributes from, from their parents. So if their parents both had blue eyes, chances are good that the, the child will have blue eyes too. Um, and, 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 and also, I guess it's true that, you know, um, children, again, through kind of like natural processes, you know, like biological processes may have like attributes of their own that are maybe a little different from the attributes of, you know, uh, of, 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 of their parents. Um, so kind of in a sense, like conceptually, the idea is like parents, parents have certain attributes, children can inherit some, maybe not all attributes, but they may have their own their own attributes that are distinct to, to them. And some of those attributes may, may, be, may be different than their parents' attributes. So like, again, biological systems, and maybe, you know, like both of my parents were, like a, a child's parents were both, let's say, medium height, but then the child grows up to be tall, like taller than their parents. So that, the height of the child could end up being like an attribute that's, that's kind of like overwrites their parents' um, uh, attribute in a certain sense. So JavaScript works in a similar way. So there's this, this parent-child relationship. So parents, um, parents, you know, parent classes in our particular case, you know, the classes have certain attributes and methods as, as we've just seen. Um, and then child, you can also create child classes that can, you know, formally inherit certain attributes from, from uh, attributes and merit uh, and, um, or properties and, and, and methods from their parents. But then also the in the definition of the child class, we can we can add add um, uh, attributes or methods that are kind of unique to the child, um, or that is to say that don't exist on the parent. Um, we could override certain override slash overwrite uh, certain attributes um, uh, uh, of uh, the, you know, the parent has, the child also has, but the child's definition of those attributes or methods is different, or we could somehow extend those, those, those attributes or, or methods. So practically speaking, let's kind of take, let's take a little, um, let's, let's take a, uh, take a, uh, an example of like a, a kind of a silly class that's, that's from the book. Um, so let's create a class called a person and, and, and the person, you know, a person, you know, we have a little constructor that constructs a person, the person has a name, okay? Um, and then the, there are two methods associated with the, the person um, that, uh, you know, the person, person can, can person greets uh, people, um, and then they also say farewell, they say goodbye. Um, and these are the definitions of those, those functions. So, you know, the greeting here is, we'll have a Boolean flag about whether, you know, um, it's, it's formal or not. Um, you know, the greeting is formal or not. If it's if it's if it is formal, then you know, say hello. My name is. If it's not formal, then you know hello. I'm. You know, insert your name. And then there's a method for farewell that doesn't have any arguments. So this is a person class. Um, now, let's imagine that there's a particular kind of person um, that that sort of. Uh, oops, sorry. That 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 extends that extends the parent that extends the parent class um, in, in in a certain way. So let's let's say that this is again again an example from the book. Let's let's call it a scientist. So a scientist um, is a is a is is a like a type of person, um, but they're 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 a child class. And that as you can see, kind of from this very first line, you know, we're we're defining we're defining a class scientist that extends the class person. So in other words, it ex form in terms of extending it, it inherits um it inherits uh attributes from the parent um and methods from the parent. And but then also in the definition we can we can override um or extend some of the the those attributes and methods. Um, so let's kind of look at the constructor function. So again, it has a constructor function that takes two arguments now. So previously we had um, a constructor function that took one argument, name. Here it has two arguments, name and area. Um, so name 
um, will be as it was before. And then area, this will be kind of like area of expertise. You know, I'm a, um, I, I'm, I'm, a I'm a scientist that, uh, you know, works in evolutionary biology, let's say. Um, uh, and, and then the name. So this is the part, I guess, Lucio, you and I were kind of saying was maybe overly complicated or like unnecessarily complicated in the book. Um, so they, they have this, this function super that um, basically kind of like, based on my understanding here, like accesses the constructor function of the parent um, and, and then kind of implements that constructor function I guess with respect to this this property, before before um, the child's constructor function does anything else. So kind of, if you will, like for this function definition, it's kind of like a effectively like a call. I guess on the call stack, like a call to the name um, this name attribute and the constructor function of of the person class, which is. The, the, the parent of, of the scientist class. Um, so this is a function super. You can read a little bit more about it in the Mozilla uh, documentation. Um, and then here we're, we're also adding um, a, this, this value, um, this, this property, which is you know, area of expertise in the way that we did before. So this, this instance of the, this class will have the area equal to whatever the, the, the argument area is that the, the, the user uh, the user of the function provides. And then here, here we're overriding the greeting function. So, uh, you know, remember the scientist, uh, sorry, the uh, person class had, had a greeting function. Um, so we're going to override that um, and make it a little bit different. Um, so we're going to make it a little bit, that it's always going to be formal um, and then it's going to have a little bit different form. Uh, or, or sorry, not always be formal. So again, there's an argument formal um, that's that's then passed to. Again, we have the super thing, um, which maybe makes it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be in this example. But basically, it, it's kind of invoking the greeting method of the parent class. So this parent the, uh, of the person class, um, and. So basically, if 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 we have the you know if the greeting is formal, we'll we'll return this. If the greeting is informal, we'll do this. And then to that, we're we're adding something. So this is the part where we're extending, right? Uh, I guess it's more. Ex I'll just write extending. Um, where we're adding to that greeting, like we're kind of appending to. It, let's talk about, and then whatever the the area of expertise of the scientist. So let's talk about evolutionary biology. If, if I'm a scientist who specializes in evolution, evolutionary biology. And then in this class definition, there's, there are no more methods, right? But still um, the scientist, because the scientist is, you know, is a, um, is, is, is a, a child of the, this parent class person, it kind of like tacitly inherits the farewell method from, from the parent. So we're not defining it here, but um, at least my understanding is that because it extends the person class and we're not formally changing that method, or I guess maybe removing that method, um, that, 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 that method is, is, is the same as it is for, for the parent class. And we don't have to write this kind of super dot farewell, right? We, we just don't write anything and then the 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 uh, a method the method from the parent class stands. Um, so this is kind of like maybe another mental model, and I, I think the book kind of has this in, in, in visual form. We can toggle to the book, but um, my kind of one mental model to have of inheritance is 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 sort of a a chain of like we're looking up the definitions of properties and methods. Um, so you can kind of think, you know, if, if you have a particular, particular, uh, instant, like an object of a given class and it's, let's imagine it's a, a child class. So, um, it's been defined with respect to some parent class, you know, if you're, if you're 
if you're trying to you know uh, ex um, extract an attribute or invoke a method, you know the question is does this exist in the child class? And if yes, then that 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 definition will be will be used. So for example, um, in, in this case here, if if we had you know an instance of a scientist and we were invoking the greeting method, um, we would JavaScript would look to the greeting method contained in the scientist class, um, and then use that 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 definition. Now that definition may also, as is the case here, like refer you know itself refer to the the method in the parent class, but doesn't have to. Um, but anyway, it's going to refer to the method that's defined in in the child class. If if on the other hand the method doesn't exist, isn't defined in the child class, then it'll refer to the parent class. So for example, here, if we were to say, you know, um, like my scientist dot farewell, open open and close parentheses. So if we're going to invoke the farewell method of the scientist, well, it's not defined in scientist, but because scientist is a child class of the person class, uh, JavaScript will look to the parent for a definition of farewell, um, the farewell method, and we'll use that definition of the farewell method, that set of instructions. And you know, if the other question, I guess, will then be, although I've covered this, is like, you know, if does it exist? You know, if it does, if the definition doesn't exist in the child, does it exist in the parent? If yes, then it uses it as we just described with the the farewell method. And if not, then I. I I guess it'll be an error message, right? Because the, the method is not defined. The method or the, the property is not defined for that, that class. Um, visually, I guess, kind of a way to look at it is, 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 uh, is in this diagram, which, which is kind of nice. Um, although they're, they're working through a particular example that you have the child, you know, the name and the area, those are kind of defined. Um, so the, the child is an actual is an object uh, of the class scientist. So then, when we're looking for like how to construct the the scientist uh, the scientist class, you know, there's a constructor function with some instructions, right? So it'll look to that. For greetings, there there's um, there are some instructions on how how to how to play out the the greetings method. Um, and then, you know, if anything is undefined. I like farewell, then we can go up to the parent class and find instructions for the farewell, the farewell method uh, in the in the parent class. Um, right. Uh, I think, yeah, that's 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 it for for the inheritance. Um, and then the book kind of goes on to some some uh, kind of um, exercises, but maybe before touching on any of the exercises, maybe I'll just stop and see if there are any questions or comments uh, maybe a small comment I was trying what we feared uh, about like using classes in a JS chat for the book and yes it, it, it does not recognize a class but it turns out that there is quite a good reason for that at least uh, in the sense to make JavaScript a, a better language uh, it's explained a little bit in the link that I just sent, but they also provide how we can solve it, at least for, for this specific book. You, you simply bind such class to the global object. So in the answer, you can see that once the class has been defined, mm -hmm. in that case, the class is validator, you can use the window of object that there is a global one. So like global variables mm -hmm. properties of such object, then you simply via that specification over there. Uh, if we do that in the in the code for the book, then it, it does work as expected. Hmm. Interesting. Oops, sorry. I think we could go over uh, the exercises. Sure. I, even if I manage to do some of them, I am not sure 
if uh, really it was a correct approach that I did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the same for me, actually. I'd be interested. Um, are, are there particular ones you wanted to look at, Lucio? Um, or did you want to just kind of go from start to finish or go as far as we can in, the, in that way? Yeah, I think there's time for all of them. Okay. So I think the delay one, I, this is the way I did it. Maybe there's a much better way to, to, to do it. Um, so, so sorry, let me, um, maybe I'll just uh, put the... the um, I don't know if it's my browser or what, but um, oh, here we go. Yeah, delay. So um, this exercise here, they want us to have some, create some class that will return the value, um, that will return its previous value whenever we, we invoke this call method. So we'll kind of have, you know, we'll print here the the value that we're passing to the console, and then we'll we'll um, have a call method that will uh, take on the current value. So uh, and, and then so here here like sorry, we'll, we'll, initial, we'll like initialize the object here of the delay class with a, and then we'll loop through the values b, c, and d. Uh, and the idea here is that when we pass uh, a, a value of b then this call method will return the value of A, so the previous value. Um, when we pass it the value of C, then it will return us the value B, which is the previous value. Um, this is the way I, I did it. I don't know if this is right. I, I actually kind of struggled with a, a little bit of this. Um, I was thinking that, you know, I'll just have a constructor that will have two things. It'll have, you know, the current value and the previous value. Um, and, and then, you know, when it's initialized, it'll have the value of both of, well, whatever the value that's passed to the constructor function will be the value for both the current value and the previous value. Um, and, and then, and then I'll have a call method that works in the following way. So I'll set, I'll set the, the, basically, uh, first I'll set the previous value to equal, um, um, equal the 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 um, the kind of the, the value from the value attribute of the uh, constructor function, um, and then then I'll update. Then uh, having done that, so I'm kind of like taking the the previous value and then writing it to the previous well, the value in initialization, and then writing it or at least for the first iteration, and then writing it to the previous value slot um, or field and, and then then now I'm updating it uh, the value uh, so I'm taking um, the value that's passed to the call method and then um, assigning it to the value attribute here um, and then uh, then I want to set things up so I can return a previous value whatever the previous value is so I'll, I'll, I'll define some variable previous um, and and then I'll simply ex extract from the object whatever the value is in, in the the previous property, and then return that. Um, and 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 this seems to work. Um, let's try. And, actually, maybe you can guide me on this, uh, uh, Lucio. On, on so if I, I was able to with Quoka, I was able to have um, sort of the um, you know the terminal pop up and. Uh, show values, kind of inline values, if you will, if I were creating a new JavaScript file, but if I'm opening an old JavaScript file, it wasn't clear to me how I could, uh, I, I guess I've got show output here. Okay, this is actually something from another exercise. Um, uh, if you use the, the command toggle, so when you press control, it should, yeah, equoca space toggle. Okay, whoops, sorry. So with that, it should start. Start. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, sorry, did I do it one too many times here? Okay. Now, okay. Now it just takes a moment for it to. Um, 
to work. So, I mean, looking at this, um, I guess there's the initial value, which is A, and then I guess we have B. So when B is passed, A is returned. When C is passed, B is returned. When D is passed, C is returned. Um, and then when E is passed, D is returned. So it seems like it's work. Oh, oh, cool. And I'm seeing it here. Um, so it looks like it's working. I don't know if there's, did you find a different or more elegant way to do this? Uh, I wouldn't call it more elegant. I simply wasn't sure if we were allowed to use more than one property. Uh, well, not more than one, more, but the value and the call, if we have to restrict ourselves to only those two properties. So I basically did, did the same as you, but I stored the previous value in a, in a, in another variable, not, not, not as a property of the class. Okay. Got it. Got it. Oh, I see. So, so basically you, you just had like, um, kind of like this, this value in a way. Yeah. So, so basically you'd have something like, um, I'll just start oh, afresh. I, I so, the, like pre previous yeah. equals like this, uh, value, yes. something like that. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. I think that, that, that's a lot more elegant. That's, that's nice actually. The code is in the, the chat. Oh, cool. Got it. Thank you. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. This is this is nice. Okay. Neat. Uh, okay. And the, compared to yours, in your case, both the. Um, no, sorry, in your case, the current and the previous value can be retrieved from, from the object. So I guess that may be an advantage compared to mine, because in, in, in my implementation, the previous value, like it just disappears. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. But I mean, in a sense, it's I don't know that it's required that it persist, right? Um... Yes, I wasn't sure about that. So, what's well, neat? That's well, kind of cool. That uh, even on, on a seemingly simple exercise, you and I have different different ways of doing it. Um, uh, I guess for a filter, I did something like like this. Um, um, I guess I'll just make that smaller. Um, so creative, so oh, yeah, sorry. So setup is um, the book wants us to say that, you know, so we'll instantiate an object um, with certain values and then we'll loop over a set of values. And whenever the 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 value that's being, that we're passing to this, this call method is a member of the initial set of values that we pass to the object, then it'll return null. So for example, we pass the value A, A is a member of this, and so we'll have null. Pass to it B, B is not a member of these vowels, uh, not a member of this set, and so it'll actually return the value itself. Um, so I did it this way, and I have to say, I, I kind of cheated here, Lucios, because I, I, I had a, I guess I'm not familiar with, with arrays. I was, I was trying to Google my way around this, actually, uh, to figure out how to do this in, in, in um, um in uh okay cool you got you got yours um but i mean my problem was that you know i i you see like right here for this when i'm instantiating the object i'm 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 making this an array right off the bat um so that i can kind of use some array functions uh so i'm i'm taking this value here and then putting it in you know taking the values and populate basically having a uh like a property that that equals um, um, a property that equals the um, this um, equals the like the values I pass to it and then and then for the call thing I'm I'm basically saying you know create some some boolean value that like whether whether the current value uh, so the value being passed to the call method is a member of that array 
And so I'm just saying you know, this, so I'm drawing it from the, extracting it from the object, um, includes, and this is this include, you know, is a member of basically. Um, and then if so, um, if so, return null. If not, then return the value itself. Um, let me see your implementation. Uh, yeah, I also wasn't sure hey, how can we pass an arbitrary number of arguments to a function, but at least from what I read, uh, inside a function, you can use the arguments keyword. Uh, oh. Well, that, that returns you almost like an array of the arguments okay. that have been passed. However, if you see in the code, there's like a, a syntax for three dots uh, for arguments and all yep. of that inside an array. And that's basically so that the argument, the, the arguments, uh, that isn't really an array, but mm -hmm. if you use the three dots key, uh, syntax, then you are now constructing an, an array out of the values in that, that are stored in that argument. So you're basically doing what, what you did. You are storing in Satan array, the arguments that have been passed. So I, I return that in inputs. Uh, and really, the call is really similar to what you did, but it's basically using like the yep. R if else. Yeah, the, yeah the, ter the ternary operator, is that, is that what it's called in JavaScript? I know in C Sharp it is. Yes. OK, I, I like this. This is a lot more elegant. Uh, well, this is this is really neat. I'll have to look this up, Lucia. I, I was struggling. I was trying to do something similar to what you were doing, and I was um, I was doing uh, inputs equals, uh, and I was trying to do like new array, and then um, well, I guess here you've okay. Here you don't have any parameters, and it, okay, interesting. But anyway, I, I was saying like, okay, let's see, inputs, I'll call that. And I, I was doing something like this and I, I couldn't get it to work, but um, I'll, have to, I'll have to have a look at, at, um, at what, you've, what you've done. This is, this is interesting. I wasn't aware of, of this. This is clearly a much, much more elegant um, solution. Yeah, do you um, want to do the, the next one? I think there's time. I actually didn't. I actually couldn't figure out the next one, or I, rather, I should say, I ran out of time. I mean, do you, if you have a solution, do you want to share your screen um, and, and walk through the solution? Okay, so let me share my yeah. I don't know if I need to unshare first, but I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, it's five minutes. Let me, okay. Um, So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so let's see for the book. In this last, this last exercise, we find a, another class called pipeline. Um, it's going to invoke the call method for any of the classes or any of the objects that are being passed to this class or to, for this instance of the class pipeline. So it's not, it's not only these two classes that we have already been working with, but it could be more. And we simply require that such classes, sorry, such objects have the call method. Um, so what, it, what this class does is as, for this specific example, so it executes the call method of this one and this one. And if any of, of those methods returns null, then pipeline, then this class also returns null. Uh, if not, it returns simply the null value. No, sorry, the, the, the value that wasn't null. So the implementation is, well, I did it in this way. So again, because we have to deal with an arbitrary large, well, sorry, for an arbitrary number of arguments for this uh, class. In the constructor, sorry, uh, okay. In the constructor, I use no arg no arguments. So and then we can retrieve all of those arguments inside an array. So this would be the arguments. And now we find also a call method for this class. Uh, let's see. Uh, I check how many arguments do we have. In this case, it's only two, right? The filter and the delay. 
and then we simply implement a, implement a, a for loop for each of those arguments, and we check that the, the result of the call value, sorry, of the call method apply to that specific case. So that would be something like we have the value A. So first we apply call of filter to A and then call of delay to A. And then we have the value B for the for this other loop. And we apply the call method of filter to B and then the call method of delay to B. Uh, and simply doing that, it's over here. A, as I say, if if all sorry, if any of the call methods return null, the, the pipeline should should also return null. So it's basically this line. Uh, and if such result was not null, then I simply want to return such not null value. So simply this this one over here. Uh, and once I implement it, as we can see over here. Uh, what is pipeline of sorry what is it what is the result of the call method of pipeline when the argument is a uh, or here it is it's null uh, for b it's a and such and such so it really does match the expected answers uh, I, I didn't manage to do the, the next one yeah me me, me neither I, I i think i ran out of time and probably also I, I i didn't immediately understand it but that's i'm sure if i spend a little more time with it i'll i'll, uh, I'll understand i thought what was kind of interesting about the these exercises is in a sense like they were a little they're not they're related to certain parts of the chapter but not others there's for example there didn't seem i, I was i was expecting that for one of the example one of the exercises it have something to do with inheritance but i didn't see an opportunity to to use inheritance Instead, it was just you know class class definitions and and methods. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're supposed to use inheritance in the in the one for in the last exercise because they say to modify it a bit. No, I'm not sure. Oh, well, yeah. Really cool. Well, Lucio, thanks. Thanks so much for. I mean, number one, your your tip, your uh, tips and tricks with uh, Quaco. I, I I um I'll I'll get up to speed with that one soon. And um and then also for the the really nice solutions um for for the for the um for the exercises. I mean, if if you wouldn't mind, would you would you mind copy pasting your your solution for the the um, this uh, the pipe the pipeline one in, in chat. Um, I I also sent it. Oh, it's already there. Okay, got it. Sorry, I didn't I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, did you manage to commit? Maybe if you put on if you could uh, push your changes like what you just showed us right now mm -hmm. for the R and D file, and I will try to to make it work for the book. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll try to commit uh, later today. I think. Okay, so we'll see you next week. All right. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much, Lucio. And yeah. and next week is uh, uh -huh. H I think it's shell. Yes. It's shell on H HTML, right? It's HTML and CSS. Okay. And yes, she really wanted to do that part about HTML, like in order to for force herself to, to learn the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's the same motivation for me. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. See you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.